Hello and welcome to this semi NXP Semiconductor's quick learning about power MOSFETs in linear mode. My name is Adam Brown and I'm a product quality manager in NXP Semiconductors. So today we're going to be looking at power MOSFETs in linear mode, how to use them, some of the considerations you must take when you're designing them into a circuit. So first of all, what is linear mode? In the top corner here we've got normal output characteristics for a power MOSFET. So along the bottom axis, the x-axis we've got the source drain voltage, on the y-axis we've got the source drain current. And plotted, we've got various black curves. It's the current that comes out of the MOSFET with different gate biases. So I've plotted it here with 3 volts, 4 volts, 5 volts and 10 volts. <coughs> now normally a MOSFET, it's a switch. So you've either got the switch on or off. When the switch is off, we normally apply a very slow gate bias. No current is flowing to the MOSFET. And across the MOSFET, we have the whole voltage of the circuit. So typically, you'd be in a position out here. No current flowing, a high voltage. When we turn the MOSFET on, we apply a very large gate bias and the source drain voltage um, reduces and so the MOSFET is then running at a very low source drain voltage. So the normal operation is to go from a position somewhere here to a position somewhere over there. When the MOSFET is fully on, the resistance is very, very low. There's a very small source drain voltage. There's a high current, but because of the small source drain voltage, there's low power dissipation. So in the operation, we're moving from a position of zero power dissipation when it's off to low power dissipation when it's on. But unfortunately, what you can see is to get from here to there, we have to pass through this region in the middle. In this, in this region in the middle, as the MOSFET is switching, there's an appreciable source drain voltage, it could be 5, 6, 7 volts, but there's also current flowing at the same time, 30, 40, 50 amps. So this is a high power dissipation situation. The MOSFET will get hot. And if you sit here for a long length of time, serious consequences could ensue. The MOSFET could get very hot and could lead to MOSFET failure. So as we're switching from what from the off state to the on state, we need to be very careful how long we sit in this linear mode and, and, and take it into consideration. <clears throat> okay, well, what exactly happens when the MOSFET's sitting here and getting hot? To the right here, we've got the transfer characteristic of the MOSFET. So if we sit, sit at one particular source drain voltage, we can plot the current flowing through the MOSFET for different gate biases. <clears throat> so across here, you can see we've got different gate biases. We've got the current flowing to the MOSFET. Now at 25 degrees Celsius, there's a black line. As the gate bias increases, the current increases. <clears throat> what happens when the MOSFET gets hot? Well, if that MOSFET gets hot, and we're sitting at a fixed bias, say at 2 volts here, the current increases. So as the MOSFET gets hotter, the current increases. <clears throat> and at low gate biases, that's always the situation. At low gate biases, below this point here, as the MOSFET gets hotter, more current flows. Above a certain gate bias, when the MOSFET gets hotter, in actual fact, the, the, the inverse effect happens and less current flows. If you're operating up in this top right hand corner, there's no problem at all because as your MOSFET gets hotter, the current will drop and the power dissipation will drop. It's quite a safe situation. <clears throat> but if you're operating below this point, it's called the zero temperature coefficient point, where there's no change with temperature. If you're operating below this point, as the MOSFET operates, it'll get hotter. If it gets hotter, more current will flow. If more current flows, more power is dissipated the MOSFET will get even hotter. So in this situation, we're in a very unstable situation and get some thermal runaway. If you imagine a MOSFET and in one location on your MOSFET it gets especially hot, that part of the MOSFET will get hotter and hotter and hotter. At that location you can get thermal runaway and you could even have catastrophic failure to a small location. So when you're operating down here, we've got to be very, very careful. Now over the years, the trend for MOSFETs has been that um, they've been designed to take more and more current. That's been achieved by, by changing the technology, making the, the technology pitch size smaller and smaller. The effect of that has been for this point to move to higher and higher currents. This, this zero temperature coefficient point now is above the, the operation mode of most MOSFETs. So that actually means that every time you're switching, you're normally operating in this mode. You're switching where there's potentially thermal runaway. So we have to be very, very careful. So when you're designing your circuit, what, so what, what advice is there? What can you find on the data sheet to help you? In the bottom left hand corner, we've got another graph you'll find on most typical data sheets, the safe operating area. <clears throat> along the y axis, we've got the source drain current. Along the, on the x axis, we've got the source drain voltage. And there are a series of lines. If you stay below the line, you're in the safe operating area for the MOSFET. And these lines are for different pulse lengths. 
So if you're in, a, in the DC operation, you've got to stay below, so you've got to stay in this triangular area down here below the DC line, and then your MOSFET will be safe. For shorter pulses, if you've got a shorter pulse, you're putting less power into the MOSFET, so you can run at higher currents. <coughs> so as the pulse lengths get smaller, you are allowed to have more and more current. Let's just talk a bit more about this curve. On the left-hand side, the upper current limit, that's determined by the MOSFET resistance. The resistance is a source strain voltage divided by the current. At very short pulse lengths, and we've got it drawn here for 10 microseconds and 100 microseconds, there's no problem with thermal runaway. The pulse length is so short, the MOSFET can't get appreciably hot. So the upper limit is just a, a, a straight line that's given by a very simple formula. The voltage times by the current times by the transient thermal impedance is equal to the change in temperature. And normally for MOSFET, we allow it to change by 150 kelvins from 25 degrees Celsius to 175 degrees Celsius. So the, at very short pulse lengths, we just get a, a straight line, and, it, and it, the voltage is inversely proportional to the current. <coughs> However, as, a, as, a, as we come to longer pulse lengths, all these problems we talked about here start to, start to take place. At longer pulse lengths, if you sit in linear mode for a long time, if you have high voltage and high current, the MOSFET can get hot, it can run away, it can fail. <coughs> So this simple straight line is no longer good enough. And for shorter pulse lengths, the, uh, the safe operating area has had to be derated de de even more. So you can see there's a, a kink always in the characteristics. That basically says for safe operation, you've got to apply less current than what you would have just purely thought by the simple linear mode, by the simple uh, linear relationship. <coughs> but if you follow this characteristic, if you always stay below those lines, your MOSFET will have safe operation. Unfortunately, for modern technologies, the safe operating cur area curve has got smaller and smaller and smaller because of the instability in the linear mode. <coughs> so if you're designing a circuit, where does that leave you? How should you go about it? Well, you can take the safe operating area curve, but probably when you're making a MOSFET selection, a simple graph you can plot, you can, you can plot the resistance of the MOSFET you want to use against the current that you're going to need in, in the linear mode. So maybe in your circuit, You've got, to have a, you've got to be able to handle a 10 millisecond pulse or a 10 millisecond transition from the on state to the off state. And typically it's going to be sitting about 20 volts. So you can look, go across your curve, find the 20 volt pole point, find the 10, 10 millisecond line, and you can read off the, the current, which will be safe to handle in the, in the linear mode. <coughs> and then you can, you can make a plot of those safe points against the resistance. Now what's happened over the years, as MOSFETs have become, they become optimized more and more and more for low resistance, if we went back about 20 years ago, we had a, a family of MOSFETs out here with quite good linear mode capability, quite a high current, but with big resistance. As MOSFETs have been developed, they've been developed for lower and lower resistance, so they've moved in this direction, the black curves, but unfortunately their linear mode capability has decreased. And so most MOSFETs now have been optimized for, for very low resistance. It's a good small piece of silicon, low power dis dissipation in the on state, but they do have power poor linear mode operation. That's a compromise that's been made. What you find is, though, for many applications nowadays, that that's not good enough. MOSFETs do need to have some safe operating capability. So for, for hot swap or for soft start, you might need to have a MOSFET which has got both low resistance and good linear mode capability. And suppliers are starting to develop MOSFETs specifically for that sort of operation. NXP has developed a family, and you can find that at uh, nxp.com, nxp.boardlive. Thank you for listening. If you want to find more information, please have a look at the NXP website, www.nxp.com. Thank you for your attention.